I once said that the best thing to come out of Juji Ito's Gyo were the memes, and there's a lot of them, but I'm not so proud that I can't admit when I was wrong, and this is one of those situations where I was wrong. A little while ago, I was going around my usual haunts, you know, clicking about and all of that, trying to find something to watch, when I saw something that genuinely chilled me to the bone. Gyo, Tokyo Fish Attack. Turns out way back in 2012, before Uzumaki was even a glimmer in Adult Swim's eyes, there was someone else making a Junji Ito animated OVA. I immediately showed my girlfriend the video and she insisted that we had to watch it. It's the story that she used to introduce me to Junji Ito way back when. I refused, she insisted. After about an hour of debate, we settled in and began the movie. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, but I'm not going to do like a side by side comparison or anything like that, mostly because I don't want to read Gyo again. I just don't. So let's start. Let's start. I can immediately say that I prefer this version of the story, but I can also understand why some people, especially those who are faithful to the original, wouldn't. It does make an immediate save, in my opinion, by expanding the cast of the story. In the original manga, the story is primarily about a, an unhappy couple that goes on a trip, and during one of their arguments, the fish just kind of show up. The movie, on the other hand, expands the cast to these three girls, one of which is newly engaged, and the other two are just kind of friends who, I guess, are there to support her in this. When the attack begins, the engaged girl immediately goes to check on her fiance, and the other two stay behind at the cabin. And this is really the divergent point in the plot. I know I've skipped some stuff, I'll go back to it, don't worry about it. The story follows the engaged girl on her attempt to make it back to her fiance. And if you watched the Godzilla remake, the American one, the one before Ghidorah, it's paced kind of like that. It, it looks much more at like the breakdown of transportation and communication and the difficulty in getting to one's loved ones in the event of a disaster than it does as like the fallout of the attack. It's a very large chunk of this runtime is dedicated to her trying to make her way back to her fiance. It slows down and it puts a lot of emphasis on it. The plane that she takes to try to get back to her home is forced to make an incredibly rough and violent landing through a runway full of fish. And then a similar incident occurs a few minutes later when the subway hits so many fish corpses on the road that it derails the train, seemingly killing like everyone on board except for the heroes. So while this all is happening, there's actually a side story happening with the other two girls. Now one of them is kind of chubby and homely by Japanese standards and the other is attractive and selfish, you know, just that kind of shitty person. When the attack begins actually, like the very first time they show up, she's about to start a threesome with two random like tinder hookup when a shark interrupts them and while they're fleeing from the shark she actually kicks her friend repeatedly in the face to free herself and then flees upstairs leaving the other two girls behind to i don't know get eaten by a shark once the shark is removed though she goes immediately back to the threesome like they're just like that was weird hey we should go back to having sex a few like scenes happen the whole train thing happens because the two stories kind of jump back and forth. I'm separating them for the purposes of clarity. And it reveals that she's she's sick and infected. She's gotten bloated. Her skin is green and just kind of gross to look at. And she is expelling gas from both ends uncontrollably. It's disgusting. And the homely girl, now that her, her friend is sick and hideous and everything, she, she just starts taunting her and kicking her in the face the way that the other girl had been kicking her. The whole time just talking shit about how she's not so high and mighty now that she's not, you know, attractive and slutty and all of that shit. So the sick girl who's just freaking, like she's already afraid of dying and now this shit's happening, just lashes out, starts beating the shit out of her, talking about how she'll always be better, blah, 
blah, blah, blah, blah. And the homely girl picks up an ashtray and just beats her to death with it. Just, it's actually a pretty neat scene and it's really scored well of her just smashing it into her head. And it cuts to like these fish corpses, just, I don't know if they're corpses, the fish things just watching, just watching her do it. And from there, we just cut back to the engaged girl. She ends up running into another shark and a squid on land. And this is really like the quote unquote action sequence of this movie. There's only like two and both of them involve a shark for some reason. This is also the, um, the fan service part of this movie. There's a lot and you'll see it here on the video, but there's a lot of fan service that I can't show you because YouTube. She does eventually run into like the Japanese Defense Force, the military and CDC, whatever, who won't let her pass over this bridge to get to the other place. And it really seems that this is their big roadblock. And as they take it some time to recover and figure out their next step, we get kind of a, a look at how society's falling apart underneath the fish attack and all of that before they reveal the doctor who was working with her fiance and is still alive. So they figure if they see him, him, he'll be able to tell her what happened to her fiance and they do it's not really made clear how they got past the military guards they just kind of smash cut to them at his house and huge exposition dump i'm not going to go into the whole thing if you haven't read kyo go read it it's there's a whole lot of backstory here it's very dumb but the long and short of it is the the gas like the farting and the burping and all of that is ghosts like Japanese World War II ghosts and they're powering the Look, I, I don't, just go read it. I don't feel like dealing with all this. We catch up with the homely girl who just finished murdering her friend and she seems to just be psychologically broken. She is just wandering the streets of Japan while all these fish are running around and soldiers are shooting them and she's not responsive to anything. She doesn't care about anything. And as she's wandering the streets, she sees her friend, the one that she beat to death with a ashtray, is now strapped into one of the machines that the fish use to travel on land. And through a pretty, actually I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give her credit, a pretty cool chase sequence, she ends up being run into like a drainage ditch filled with these fish. Like it's insane. The visual of it looks beautiful. I'm never gonna take away Junji Ito's visuals from him. He's great at creating an image. And she's pretty much just like crushed by the weight of it or killed it's not really clear she just kind of sinks into all the fish um that's not actually true there's a very small moment near the end where you see her corpse is in one of these machines so she did die and then i guess was put into one of these machines at some point it's kind of supposed to be like the all is lost moment for the engaged girl but we'll get there later so she is smothered and killed in this drainage pit while the other girl just kind of looks down on her and for me for a lot of people this isn't going to be a problem but for me this is where things got real dumb real fast but it's better than it was in the manga and i'll explain why so we're gonna a whole lot of shit's gonna happen real quick and i'm just gonna try to get through it so the engaged girl finds her fiance and it turns out that the doctor is using him because he was sick to create his own man-made version of this machine that the fish are using to walk on land and that you know it's assimilating dead people and all of that it goes about as well as you would think it would go the machine does work but the guy immediately escapes after attacking the doctor and runs off into the fucking world as they're chasing after it we get to see this enormous monstrosity of a machine like it's one of the small care or a larger carrier i guess but it's one of the carriers with just a pile of corpses on it just held together by wires and cords and everything and here's where things get weird because it uses the smell like the gas that it emanates which again is the ghosts of japanese soldiers to function as hands to pick up a girl nearby and assimilate it onto the body like it's whatever it's fine so while this is happening the reporter who's been helping the engaged girl get to her fiance stumbles upon this absolute psychopath who has been using the zombies to create like a circus for some reason if this had more context in the manga i don't remember it but i remember it being weird in every setting but it so it has this amazing thing where one of them's like a fire breather right they're using the gas that it expels and they have this torch and it breathes out and you can see the ghosts burst into flame and it's freaking amazing like this movie has so many good visuals and i'll try to include as many as i can in these clips but it looks so cool i cannot emphasize that enough so 
the zombies rebel, the whole circus falls apart, it's dumb, but the natural machines, like the ones made by fish powered by Japanese ghost zombies, is they kill the fiancé in his unnatural you know man-made machine for some reason i don't know if they made it clear why they did this they just seem to not like the fact that there was a man-made machine in their midst but they kill him and it sucks so her fiance dead her friend's dead she decides that the best place to hide from these fish is the sea obviously they're coming onto land go out onto the sea it's weirdly brilliant as an escape plan and as they find a speedboat for her to take and leave the reporter reveals that he's actually infected now and he's just gonna wait to die or find someone to take care of him and as she sails away into the distance to be rescued and whatever the doctor flies by overhead in his fart power dirigible and the reporter just laughs whether it's at the absurdity of what's happened or maybe he just realized he's in a Junji Ito story but he just laughs there on the beach waiting to die which I think is the best summary of any Junji Ito story you can have it's the perfect ending to this film it's weird how much I liked this movie and I know that may not have come across in the way I described this because I was describing a Junji Ito story but I really do like it it's really good and I think it's because it's a very tight hour and 10 minutes, including the credit. It's, it's a very tightly paced movie, but it, it captures everything that anyone really remembers from the story. The fish in the bag that they kill and then follows them to their hometown floating in the air. The shark attack in the cabin, the draining pool, the man-made machine, the circus, the doctor and his weird blimp shit, all of it. And it happened so quickly that you don't really have time to think about how dumb all of this is, to put it nicely. You get to just kind of accept the absurdity of it happening so quickly, which if you have seen my Uzumaki video, and if you did, I don't know why you're here considering that is a terribly ratioed video. That is what I liked about the Uzumaki video, is that everything happened one after the other, after the other, after the other, which makes it almost more understandable how people are reacting to it everything's just kind of falling apart whereas in Uzumaki it was supposed to take place over like months and it was dumb that nobody seemed to notice anything was wrong and I'm not going to go back into that whole thing if you want to know how much I hate Uzumaki the video's somewhere in my fucking history this movie is so well paced out that I didn't have a problem with any of it even the ending where he flies over in his stupid thing didn't bother me I mean I thought it was dumb but just like the reporter all I could do was laugh because of how quickly this whole situation had just fallen apart it was insane i could make some nitpicky complaints if i wanted to like the fact that the fish don't seem to give a fuck about our protagonist being around they attack and kill a number of people around them but outside of the shark and the giant squid they don't really seem to give a shit about any of our main characters for seemingly for the sole purpose that they are main characters they need to survive speaking of the squid um this movie really wanted to give some fan service and i'll put up what i think i can get away with and i think i can get away with most things that aren't nudity because i say fuck a lot and this isn't for children but trust me there's there's more if you want to see it all in all i think it's a strong retelling of the story and to me a better version of it i'd give it 7.5 maybe an 8 it's it's a good movie i i really liked it i thought it was fun i imagine if i if i didn't didn't know what it was and who wrote it if I didn't know it was a Junji Ito story I might have been a little disappointed at the lack of any kind of resolution other than the girl just left and that was the end of her story but because I know who it is and how his stories generally end I was I was fine with the lack of an ending I'm sure there's people who are watching this who are already in the comments telling me how wrong I am and how I don't understand horror and Junji Ito is a fucking genius hi Uzumaki but I like this movie and like Uzumaki I don't regret watching it and I don't regret preferring it over the story now I'm gonna go find another movie I'll talk about that. I'll see you next time.